This is the Fuji X100V. But this is not an in-depth review of the X100V. No, this, this is gonna be something a little bit different. I wanna cut right to the chase here because this is a bit of a weird video for me. To sum it up, I love this camera and yet I'm not buying one and I'm not sure you should either. So let's jump into that. A few weeks before this camera got announced, Fuji sent me out a loaner unit, said, hey, we've got a camera coming out, sign this paper, play with it, let us know what you think, you can make a video if you want, you know, just tell us what you think. And on launch day, I put together a small video for my IGTV, half a silly video, half talking about the camera, and half asking the question, question of whether or not people would want to see a full YouTube review from me. But there was this one comment that stood out to me. How does it compare to just taking pics with the iPhone 11? And now listen, I know a lot of people make videos like, is the new iPhone finally better than a DSLR? Pro photographer smashes his A9 and J buys a Google Pixel. That's not what I'm trying to do with this video and that's not why that question was so interesting to me. No, the reason this question was so interesting to me was because it actually made me rethink how I think about cameras. And I can break that down into three main categories, which are practicality, experience and performance. And so the question is, how does the X100V fit into all of that? And to answer that question, I met up with my good friend, Patrick Tommaso. Hello, I'm Patrick. I don't know if you would describe yourself this way, but I think of you as a urban landscape photographer, yes. a great street photographer, uh, an advocate for JPEGs. Yes. <laughs> uh, you're a very good phone photographer though. You post a lot of photos on your Twitter uh, of the city. And so when I found out that you bought the original X100 recently, super retro, uh, I was kind of surprised <laughs> because I, I thought of you as someone who wouldn't opt for something like this, you yeah. as someone that would use your phone. Uh, first off, this camera, which is the, looks very similar, honestly, to the new X, yep. all, I mean, all the X100s have relatively stayed the same body style. Yep. So there is a bit of like bragging rights when you walk down the street. First off, A, people first off think it's a Leica, yeah. which is kind of cool. Yeah. Um, but the best part is this only cost me $200. Okay. So that's very different <laughs> it's than- It's a very, very different price this. point. Kind of like a collector's kind of thing for me too, because I do shoot with an X-T3. And as you mentioned, I do shoot a lot with my phone as well. But I also, which maybe isn't as public as most people know, is like I do have a lot of film cameras. Mm. And so I do love shooting 35 millimeter film. And what I was looking for with this camera was a weird stop gap between using my phone and what I love from a film camera, like a 35 millimeter fixed lens yeah. film camera. And so this felt like the best middle ground because like film is expensive. It is kind of a pain to shoot with. You don't know what you're shooting, first of all, so that's one thing you gotta get it over. It sounds so hipster, but I wanted everything of a film camera, but I just wanted it to be digital. Yeah. And it's not, and like, as you said, like phones are so good now. Like I have an iPhone 11 Pro and I know what that phone can do. But what I find with that is that I do a lot of like spray and pray photography mm. with that, which is literally just like bursting around the city. It's how I get a lot of good street shots, honestly. Like yeah. that's like the curtain lifted is a lot of it is just like a lot of luck and just like bop, yeah. bop, 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 bop. It's at the hip, it's down here, it's wherever, it's kind of very very inconspicuous, but that's kind of its downfall at the same point too. Mm. It's not that this camera can't shoot what the phone shoots and the phone can't shoot this. I'm shooting photos with this that I wouldn't shoot with mm. my phone. And it comes down to like full out just the experience. This camera forces you to kind of sit there, focus, get it right, get your composition, and you slow down to take a picture, much like you would with a film camera. Right. So when I shoot with the X100V now, I have had a little bit of time with it. I love it, it's a fantastic camera, but it feels like when I'm shooting with my X-T3. Who do you think the X100V is geared towards? Like, who is this the right camera for? If you're a purist photographer hmm. who really likes the idea of sitting down to compose, maybe you had film cameras or you have film cameras now, it looks like a film camera and it feels like a film camera, it shoots like a film camera, 
even the new one, just the body style itself will make you compose differently. The hybrid viewfinder yeah. is gonna change the way you compose quite a bit. I think you made a good point earlier of doing like family stuff mm -hmm. and it's just like a snap camera. Yeah. But then the argument becomes that for $1,700, $1, is it a snap camera at that point? You yeah. know what I mean? Like it's an expensive snap camera. So you really gotta love the experience. And I realized that I'm actually not reaching for this camera yeah. nearly as much as I thought I would just because I always have my phone. I take this out with the intention of shooting, yeah, which right. is also why I'm getting different images, because it's more of an experience, it's more of like a planned action right, for an afternoon. I'm looking for shots. I'm looking for shots, right? Mm -hmm. This is a camera you pick up and you're like, I'm going shooting today. Yeah. That's really what yeah. this is for and why I love it so much. But this, I just feel like it's like, it's all about the process. It's so interesting like, and kind of stupid to me. Yeah, yeah. This is the Fuji X100 perfected. It's a truly great camera. I have almost nothing bad to say about this camera. If it is performance that you're looking for, there's no doubt about it. This lens is fantastic. It's snappy, the autofocus is great. Even the video looks good. But if it's purely on specs and performance for $1,800, I might look towards something more like the newly announced X-T4. Because you can get a 23 F2 on there, or the 18 F2, which is just a bit bigger than this. But you can also put on a host of other lenses. You get better video features, you get a fully articulating screen. And for even less than this, you could buy something like the X-T30, maybe even the X-T3 now. If it's the experience that's most drawing you to a camera like this, well then, Fuji's put out several other very good models that you can get used, or even still new, for a much lower price point. You know, you can get an X100F or an X100T for half the price of this, and it's going to give you the same overall shooting experience. If the main reason you're interested in this camera is for its practicality, you know, it's small, compact, I don't think this is the camera for you because modern phones truly are incredible. And if you're anything like me, it's in your pocket all the time. I'm the person in my family and friend groups when people are like, hey, my girlfriend and I, we're going on a vacation and we want to bring a camera. Which DSLR should we buy? And I've just seen far too many people buy new cameras, DSLRs, mirrorless cameras, and then just never really use them. Now that your phone has multiple lenses built into it and these night modes are getting incredible for low light photography, I just struggle to see who I think should spend $1,800 on this camera. If what you're looking for is the perfect balance between portability and experience and ultimate performance, and you just really like the look of this camera and the price point doesn't scare you away, then like get it. You're gonna love it. And if you do get it, I hope you love it for a long, long time. There's this funny thing that happens when I talk about cameras or just companies in general on the internet, which is that there's a portion of you that are like, I can't trust you this is a sponsored video. And I gotta tell you, you're right, this was a sponsored video. But it was not sponsored by Fuji, no, 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 no. It was sponsored by Storyblocks. Unless you are very new to my channel, you are well aware of Storyblocks. Storyblocks is an incredible subscription platform for filmmakers, but also just for creatives at large to help tell better stories and to communicate more effectively. It wasn't actually until I started using Storyblocks that I started coming across some clips that I recognized and I was like, wait a minute, I've seen these videos. And that's when it hit me, there are a a lot of big YouTubers that I know and follow that are licensing some of their B-roll straight from Storyblocks. And I love it, I think it's a great idea because it shows that it's the story that is most important to these creators and hopefully to you as well. While shooting this video, Brandon and I hopped on the train to Toronto and didn't really know what we were making yet. And so we didn't film any establishing shots or B-roll. And so from today's video, basically any shot in Toronto that I'm not in, I pulled it from Storyblocks. All sorts of gorgeous time lapses and hyperlapses, slow motion, regular motion, summer, spring, fall. In fact, I ended up typing in Toronto winter just to make sure that my shots would fit into my story. And I'm very happy that I did because this video would have been worse off without it in my opinion. Storyblocks has so much more than just stock footage though. They've also got After Effects and Apple Motion templates. They've got a really good sound library, digital effects and elements and all sorts of things to spice your edits up. So if you think that that would be helpful for you, click the link down in my description, pull up their website, browse through what they have. See if that could help you tell better stories because it helped me and a bunch of YouTubers who I shall not name. If you are someone who's buying this camera or who has already ordered it, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. I don't think it's the right camera for me, and I love it. 
Oh yeah, <laughs> these glasses, they don't have lenses in them. I don't know where they came from. They were just on my desk. I don't know who they belong to, but I started wearing them and then I forgot I had them on and well, here we are. A man in his moo moo. <laughs>